Hello, everyone. Welcome to Power by Snowflake, a series where we interview technology leaders building applications and businesses on Snowflake. I'm your host, Julian, and today I'm here with Che Sharma, founder and CEO at Epo. Che, thank you for joining us in our show today. We'd love to just even get us started with, like, what is Epo? And tell me a little bit more, like, the journey of how Epo came uh, into inception. Absolutely. Thanks for having me here, Julian. So I'm Che. I'm the CEO here at Epo. We're a next-gen AB experimentation platform. A lot of it came out of my personal experience from being at Airbnb really early. I was the fourth data scientist there. And just seeing how impactful experimentation was for you know, not just the data team, but the overall entrepreneurial culture of the, of the building. So the big thing that I think about experimentation is that when you get it right, it actually will change your entire culture of innovation, where now people can try out ideas without having to win political battles. You can do it and just kind of know that if the metrics go down, you're going to be aware. If the metrics go up really well, you're going to be aware. But the problem I kept seeing is that to do this well, you have to integrate really well with the source of truth data, the same data that the CFO cares about. So that like, if you find some great idea, it sh people should pay attention. And that naturally leads you to warehouse native architecture, to using Snowflake, uh, to being centered on analytics. And that's a lot of what we do here at Epo. Yeah, no, that sounds really cool. And I sort of love how you've taken this experience. I'm sure being the fourth data scientist at Airbnb was an awesome experience. And so bringing all that knowledge into what you're building now is really cool. One of the things you mentioned, right, it's the source of truth and mm -hmm. doing things that impact sort of like what the CFO cares about. So that definitely helps a lot of the teams that are focusing on like A-B experimentation. But you as a builder building uh, an application, how does Snowflake also help you uh, in terms of making it easier to build? It's incredible. I mean, I don't think Epo as a business would have been possible before the Snowflake effect on the world. Because now what's great is that our customers all use Snowflake. And now they have this very elastic, publicly addressable system where you can actually build applications on top of it. So like the idea of being a warehouse native application that sits on your Snowflake, on your warehouse, would not have been possible until a Snowflake-like system became. Yeah, and so I think everything around building applications in Snowflake is sort of new. So tell me a little bit about like how long has Apple been in the market? Yeah. Where are you guys in the funding rounds? Tell me how you're going through today's current economic environment and how yeah. Snowflake is uh, helping you continue to grow during these stages. Epo is a few years old. We've we're a Series A backed. We've raised around $20 million, backed by some of the best you know, VCs in the business. The great thing about Snowflake for us is that we've noticed with customers, downturn markets mean you need ROI from your product investments. Like You can't afford to have teams building things that are not moving metrics in really important ways. And we've seen this, where you know our customers, like many others, have had layoffs, and it's, it's unfortunate. But the experimentation teams, the ones that are keeping themselves accountable to things like revenue and purchases and retention, these are the ones that don't get touched as much. You know, most of our teams have not had many layoffs. And a big part is that experimentation has a clear path to revenue. And so I always think it's one of the most important things for a data team, because if you're going to be spending lots of money on your data warehousing, your data quality, all these ETL systems, it all needs to add up to better decision making. And by better decision making, it's the ones that are moving metrics in the right direction. And so experimentation is one of the few levers that like, really gets in that path, where here's a set of things you would have launched that actually would have been bad for revenue. Here's a set of things you would not have launched that were actually huge winners. And you know, from my time at Airbnb, from my time at Webflow, with now with all of our many customers, experimentation teaches you that some of the biggest ideas in terms of revenue can come from the smallest places. And without experimentation, you don't really know which one they are. So I love a lot of the things that you just mentioned, right? In terms of like metrics and how they drive value, aligning to the metrics that drive value and experimentation being part of that in such a current environment. I think the other thing is for the organizations and the leaders of those organizations to leverage existing investments, such as their implementations of Snowflake, to continue to drive value on top of the data they have in there. And so being integrated on top of that also makes that a lot easier for organizations to bring in. Dramatically easier. I mean, it, it means a lot to go to a C-suite executive and say, my idea boosted the metric you stare at every day. You know, whether that's customer support tickets going down, whether it's revenue going up, whether it's a strategic goal you know, around your you know, product landscape. Like whatever it is, if you have these board level priorities, experimentation means a board can say, here's what I care about, and the teams all across the organization can pursue those goals and you know, be very innovative around it. You know, we saw at Airbnb some of the biggest changes on our booking metric, which was what we cared about at the time, came from stuff that took half a day. 
in time. You know, some of the work that took like one hour le led to more bookings than multiple quarter projects. And so experimentation, it's, it really teaches you just how unpredictable innovation can be, you know, how many big impacts you can come from small places. But to do it, you need infrastructure that can make it really seamless, make it really democratized, make it just part of the DNA. And that's where companies like Airbnb, Facebook, Netflix, Uber, you know, when you look at the best companies of the last generation, they won their markets by investing in experimentation. You can see it all across their blog posts. You can talk to any alumni there. But it's just been so hard to make that available to everyone because you need large teams of technical data engineers and statisticians. So in a lot of ways, what we're trying to do here at FO is just make that technology available to everyone else and to use your kind of existing data investments to power it. Yeah, so I'm loving everything you're talking about, how easy it is to do all this experimentation, all this knowledge that you're bringing in from your previous role, particularly everything that happened at Airbnb, and now packaging into this really easy to use product. We'd love to see how this actually works. Uh, let's jump into a demo. Let's jump into it. So as a starting point, let me just talk to you about a little bit how Epo is set up. So we are a warehouse native application. We are the first warehouse native experimentation application. And so that means that the data forever stays in your cloud, in your Snowflake. And we do all of our computation on your Snowflake. And the great thing is, you know, it's great for privacy, it's great for security. If you have sensitive data that you don't want to share with third parties, and it also means that there's no shadow warehouse that you have to reconcile against, which again, when a very trustworthy consequential process like experimentation, which is going to lead to some people getting promoted, you know, some code being dismantled, you need to understand it all the way down to the studs which you can do by just looking at every query we run in Snowflake. Now, when you run experiments, the, there's a bunch of steps to it, right? You have to plan it, set it up, et cetera. At every single point, there are statistical things we give you, there are data computation things we give you, and it all is centered around the warehouse. So for example, on feature flagging for setting up experiments, you can use EPO for that. We have SDKs. If you are using a LaunchDarkly or something else, that's also fine. All that matters is that the data ends up in Snowflake. And from there, we will help you with power analysis, with metric computation, with reporting, a bunch of other things that I'm about to show you. So here's EPO as it exists today. Some things I want to focus on is that we made it really accessible for people. You know, not everyone has a big giant team of statisticians like you know, some of the things do. And so for example, we help you compute how long to run an experiment. We have these progress bars that tell you that you know, this experiment is done, some of the others are in progress. Under the hood, it does something called a power analysis, which is fairly complicated to do. We automate it for you. And the other great thing is we have a whole suite of diagnostics to make sure that your Snowflake data is in a good state, that it's you know, present, it's up to date, it's accurate. Now, suppose you want to understand what is going on with this experiment. Something you might want to do is first check out screenshots and say, like, OK, this is the experiment that I am about to analyze. Then you want to see, is this data up to date? We have, in addition to those diagnostics, a bunch of scorecards that let you see, here's how recently the data is updated, here's what table it's pulling from, and I, as like a PM or engineer, know that I have around 1.4k or so upgrades a day. If you want to dive deeper, it's very easy. You can use our out-of-the-box segmentation tools to say, I want to see this result split by my most important segmentations. Again, because we live right on top of your Snowflake, any sort of well-modeled user segmentation we can use. For example, something out of DBT or Airflow, where you calculate something like a user persona or LTV tier. You can do these slice buys really, really easily. And then you can you know, check the trends over time. Under the hood, everything is derived from your warehouse. So to configure a metric, you give us SQL snippets. And you say, like, this is what revenue is. And what's cool about our system is that it really reinforces single source of truth by letting you annotate the SQL and get a lot of metrics out of it. For example, suppose there's a user involved in this revenue event, but there's also a company or another user or a product SKU. Now, if you were to run your experiments and randomize by company instead of user, it would all still work. Once you have these SQL queries, you know only a data analyst or someone who really understands the Snowflake setup can tell us what revenue is. But the actual process of metric formation can be democratized. You can give a PM or an engineer the ability to take that revenue concept and now suppose you want to sum it. But suppose another PM wants to do unique people who have used revenue. Or suppose you want to do something more exotic and say, like, I want to have the number of people who had $100 of revenue in the first seven days. So for example, if you want to do the Facebook thing of 10 friends in seven days, 
you can all configure that here. And our whole perspective is that the data team, the analytics team, the BI team, you need to tightly control what revenue is. Multiple people should not redefine revenue. But the idea of should you sum it, should you unique it, that can be democratized. And we're going to do a lot of smart statistical things for you so that you're not going to shoot yourself in the foot. For example, every company I have ever worked at has had outliers, you know, some crazy power users that will drive the entire result. We will naturally handle that for you with Windsorization and Cupid. Suppose you have some metric that is like an average purchase price, a ratio. You actually have to do different things statistically. You have to use something called the delta method. And so we'll do that for you. So with this, PMs can kind of create their own metrics. You can set some of them as guardrails so that every single time you track an experiment, you're always going to look at these metrics. You can organize them into collections and say, like, these are my search ranking metrics. These are my growth metrics. And now as you set up experiments, you can make sure that everyone is looking at their most important metrics and you're understanding who is driving what. And even with experiment planning, we provide you the world's best power analysis calculator to figure out how long to run an experiment. So you can take a certain entry point, like when someone does a search, when someone opens the app. You can take your most important metrics, like revenue or purchases or support tickets, and then see under various scenarios, if I was to wait six weeks, what type of effect could I detect? This is the type of calculation that you have to do if you're going to run experiments in a hygienic and ROI way. But it's, it's high expertise. It would require like a, an analyst, perhaps a statistician, to do it for you. And EPO just does that all for you. And at EPO, we also provide enterprise-grade feature flagging and randomization. You can do things like do smooth rollouts, start it off as a 5% exposure and work your way up to 100%. You can do very involved targeting rules. So if you want to do something like, I want to include all uh, iOS users, but I don't want to include a certain app version or something like that, you, know, you can do that and then easily check and make sure that it's all working. And with that, you know, engineers can really quickly self-serve and just create experiments on their own, which is awesome because that's just going to mean more experiments, more innovation, more ideas tested. And when you look at EPO reports, the key thing to remember is we're a warehouse native application. That means you look at results like this. You see these lifts, these quantities. Every single number you see on EPO is on a table in your Snowflake instance. We are doing all of our computation there. You can see every query we ran there, which means it's, we are fully auditable. You can understand what we're doing. If you ever need to reconcile the results, you can see exactly the queries that ran. And if you ever want to pull these data, this data into you know, a notebook for analysis or any of your other data tools, it's super easy because it just exists right on your Snowflake. So that's our demo. Yeah, no, that was really cool. And I think what I like about this is how you're bringing so many personas together, from those defining the metrics to those that can self serve, even generating metrics or running all these experiments. Yeah. So to me, it's like, OK, how is all this actually happening in Snowflake? How is Snowflake making it easier to bring so many users and even so many users across so many accounts? How is Snowflake making that easier for you as someone who's building an application on top of Snowflake? You nailed it, right? Experimentation is a collaboration across a bunch of different functions. Engineers set them up. Data people analyze them. PMs coordinate among the org and report it out. And the key thing with experimentation is that every step of the life cycle, you're kind of doing a data analysis. Like When you're setting it up, you have to do a bunch of planning to figure out how long to run it. It involves pulling different statistical quantities. When you analyze it, you're trying to figure out what moved. And Snowflake just makes it all possible because these, these computations are very extensive. You know, if you look at a place like an Airbnb, like a large percentage, you know, upwards of a third to a half of all computations are happening for experimentation. It's like very intense pipelines. And so with Snowflake, we can do it very optimally, performantly, in a way that's fully auditable by our customers. Yeah. So there's already so much stuff that's built into the platform. We'd love to know, like, what are you excited about launching that's coming to your users? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we are so focused on helping people establish experimentation culture and entrepreneurial culture. So we're very excited to kind of like build a lot more that lets you do that, that builds the culture and the DNA of your org. So there's going to be a lot more collaboration features, a lot more reporting features, a lot more advanced analyses that can do things besides A-B tests. You know, there's a lot of things that you'd love to measure and put up on the scoreboard alongside all your A-B tests. So we're going to be continuing to push the bleeding edge of advanced stats that you see at places like Airbnb and uh, you know, power our companies to drive more and more innovation. 
Yeah, I love how all of this is going to help our Snowflake users get more value from their data through applications like yours. And so thank you for telling us more about Apple today. For other users, how can they learn about Apple after this? You can come to the website at getepo.com um, and get in touch with us. You know, we always love talking to all sorts of data teams and product teams, engineering teams, people who just want to see like what products are winning and improving metrics. What is driving ROI in this organization? How can I take my data in places like Snowflake and you know make it come alive in showing what users really want? Yeah, no, that's super exciting. And so really excited that I had you today on the show. For everyone else that was watching, thank you for joining us today. You can see more videos like this one by tech leaders building applications on Snowflake by checking some of our other videos on YouTube. Uh, so be sure to subscribe, and that way you get notified when more videos come on. Again, I'm Julian. I was your host for today. And thank you for joining us on another episode of Powered by Snowflake.